ever since that devastating day during her childhood, Loba has spent her whole life filled with anger and fear towards the demon that took her parents away. As she grew and found her own confidence, fear and rage turned into a lust for vengeance. So why, after hunting Revenant down for so long, did she pause her quest for vengeance to go battle it out in the Apex games, sometimes even chatting alongside the very demon she despised her whole life? And how did she even get into the games in the first place? After seeing her sneak her way through into Kings Canyon and destroy Skulltown, why was she even allowed to take place in the games? This video will go into the detailed lore behind Loba's story and how it all links together. This is a spoiler free lore video but it will talk about some of the quests already out in the game so you'll want to finish those first or watch my videos on them first. So before we can go into the details of how and why she joined the Apex games we need to talk more about Loba and her personality. She isn't just a human hellbent on revenge, I mean she has more to her. Ever since a young age she had a strange attraction to all things valuable and found a natural skill in stealing, deceiving and sneaking her way towards any valuable thing that would catch her eye. It was a skill she must have picked up from her parents. But to her, it wasn't just a skill, it was a passion. If there was one thing Loba loved more than owning the most valuable, expensive and rarest items in the Outlands, it would be the adrenaline that came with slyly and skillfully stealing rare things from their original owners. Of course, Loba had a past that haunted her, but for many years she fell deeply in love with her passion and almost nothing mattered more. So, when finally seeing Revenant's face again, thanks to Loba's assistant Jamie, digging up some dirt on him, Loba's life flashed before her eyes, and that dormant rage and lust for revenge filled her from head to toe. So out she went to hunt down the demon. That, according to Jamie, was laying deep under King's Canyon. Of course, none of the Ever Legends knew at the time, but Revenant was a simulacrum that was used for all sorts of war crimes and assassinations by Hammond Robotics and the Syndicate. More on that later, but either way, Loba knew the truth, and with Jamie's excellent research skills, they found out that Revenant had a single source which allowed Revenant to come back to life again and again. It was Revenant's original human head buried deep underground King's Canyon. So off Loba went, she tracked Revenant down. It was as if her years as a high tier thief paid off because she managed to sneak her way through without setting off a single alarm. But when Loba actually came face to face with Revenant again, a hot streak of rage came over her and she acted out recklessly. She shot and failed to kill Revenant. The security system kicked in and Revenant's head was teleported to another planet called Samathi. Following a run-in with a large group of spectres, Loba accidentally caused carnage to King's Canyon and found herself face to face with the legends and Revenant himself. So at this point you'd think that it would make sense for Loba to run off and hunt down Revenant, the real Revenant who had just teleported to Samathi. So what suddenly changed her direction here and what happened between this moment and the game we know today where Loba is fighting against or sometimes even alongside Revenant? Well thanks to the loading screen information we can find out. Essentially, two higher level members of Hammond Robotics and the Syndicate flew down to the carnage that had been created. They were backed by a group of mercenary Syndicate soldiers and a platoon of Hammond Robotics Spectres. Sure, Loba probably had the skill to fight through this small army of soldiers if she wanted, but both Hammond and especially the Syndicate had far more power than that. Loba knew that. She had known the true power of Syndicate from a very young age. But instead of any violence or attempt to detain Loba, Hammond's representative stepped in to give Loba a chat. We don't know what exactly happened in this conversation, but we do know a deal was made. Loba agreed to join the Apex Games and in return, Hammond Robotics would help provide Loba with something. As we later learned in the quest, where Octane went on a date with Yoko, which is the same girl we're talking about now in the loading screen. Basically, Hammond Robotics were willing to give Loba a clue to find the source code to Revenant's head. As far as we know it, the thing that Hammond Robotics gave Loba was information on how to uncover an artifact, 
and of course during the quest missions we actively hunt down components for this artifact. But if you read the description for each artifact piece it's clear this isn't some old valuable jewel, it's a piece of technology and it may help Loba on her quest to fight against Revenant and find the source code. But why would Hammond Robotics give this information to Loba and what would they want in return? Well for Hammond it's actually a win-win. Hammond knew that seeing Loba and Revenant fight it out in the arena would be an excellent popularity stunt to get more viewer attention. Remember, the Apex Games is a massive show broadcasted to everyone in the Outlands. But it wasn't just that. Hammond Robotics wants Revenant dead just as much as Loba does. After Revenant malfunctioned, he went on his own vengeance mission, hunting down Hammond Robotics employees and breaking into laboratories to find out more about his past and put an end to whoever created him. Revenant was mad and he wanted to act out his revenge. Eventually, after going through a period of madness, Revenant realized that he could never win. He'd never die and he was always forced to come back to life and his underlying programming was still there. His strange need to kill would never ever die down. So Hammond Robotics, scared for their life, encouraged or tricked Revenant somehow to join the Apex game so he could kill freely. At this point Revenant's still pretty mad at Hammond but he's sort of given up and has given into his programming. At this point the only thing on Revenant's mind is to kill. So Hammond have managed to contain Revenant, for now at least, but who knows when Revenant may have another streak of madness, and who knows what that could mean for Hammond themselves. Hammond literally can't kill Revenant either, because the security system is automated and very, very hard to break into, as we saw with Loba's attempt. So Hammond is sort of sitting by with this ticking time bomb sitting in the games. So if Hammond Robotics can give information to Loba, along with some kind of technology that may be able to put an end to Revenant for good, Hammond Robotics can let Loba do their dirty work. Loba of course would do anything for that kind of information, so she agreed that in return she'd join the Apex Games. Besides, there's supposedly more treasure hiding in the arena that's sure to get her attention. Remember, she's not just hellbent on revenge, she loves shiny things too. So that's the story of how and why Loba joined the Apex Games. All of this information is based on facts in the lore from within loading screens, trailers, quest dialogue and in-game voice lines. So it looks very likely the whole quest will end with a very interesting story, so I can't wait to see what happens next. So in summary, Loba got herself in a bit of a situation with Hammond and the Syndicate and they struck a deal. Loba would join the Apex Games to provide the viewers more attention and in return Hammond has basically given Loba some information on how she could potentially end Revenant's life. Of course, we know that Loba will want to put Revenant's life to an end, and in some strange way, Revenant kind of wants that too. And I talked about in a previous theory video that perhaps Loba and Revenant may end up teaming up to go on the same mission together. And in the latest quest, we actually saw Revenant and Loba kind of interact with each other. And in a strange way, Revenant is kind of like really interested in Loba. He kind of likes the way Loba has such a hatred towards him. Revenant loves playing around that, so Revenant's definitely going to stick by and try and tease Loba and get into her mind, basically. And Loba kind of knows that she can use Revenant against himself in a strange way. She can get Revenant to do her dirty work, so it's all a crazy mind game that's going on and I don't know how it's going to evolve. Of course, Revenant is a legend that we play in game and there's no way they'd just delete him from the game. That's definitely not going to happen. So there has to be some other way that this story resolves itself. How is Loba and Revenant's story going to evolve by the end of the quest? I'm not sure, but we're certainly going to find out each week as the quest story evolves and I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this law video I'm definitely going to do more of these so if I did another law video what character would you like me to cover next leave your feedback below I'm always excited to hear your comments and I'll be there so I'll see you in the comments
Cheerio. Did you know I stream almost every day from 7pm UK time or 11am Pacific Standard Time. You can catch me live right here on YouTube, so make sure you have notifications turned on. I also have a new members program. Become a member for $2.99 a month, get your comments highlighted in videos, get a cool badge in live stream chat, get access to these cute emotes and also gain access to my members tips videos, where you can ask me for any tips and I'll be making new videos weekly to help you improve your own game. Click the join button or click the link in the video description to get involved.